Hey, this is Ryan from You Can Draft, and today we're going to talk about fields. Now, fields are really interesting. They are um, intelligent text that's tied to uh, data elsewhere in a drawing or file um, or objects within a drawing. Um, and they can be really useful for linking information um, that you want to display about certain things. And it's, it's just easiest if I show you. So fields can be inserted just about anywhere that you can have text. So that includes multi-line text, single line text, um, attributes, dimensions, tables, uh, things of that, that sort. So uh, we're going to start with uh, multi-line text. It's just the easiest to, to showcase this. So um, I'm going to just put a text box here. And we're just going to say this is the test text box. And then we're going to put equals. Okay, this is my text box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a field. Now there's a few different ways that you can insert a field. Um, one of the simplest is to do it from the menu, uh, which is right here. It says field. You can alternatively hit control and F to bring up the field uh, window. You can access th uh, that again anywhere you can enter text. You can put you can type control F because uh, you won't always have access to the uh, the field uh, uh, option here. You can also right click inside of uh, the text editor uh, or text box area and look for uh, field, which is um, I can't remember where this one's at. I don't really use this one very often. Um, yeah, sorry, right there. Insert field. There's where there's the hotkey for control F. Okay, so let's get into the field dialog box so we can insert our field. Now, I'm not going to go through everything here because I'll be honest, I don't know everything because I don't use everything, but I'm going to show you some of the more common ones that, you're, that you are going to be interested in using. There's a whole list here, and this entire list can be filtered out by the category. You've got date and time, the document, um, linked objects, other plot and sheet set. Okay, so um, one of the easiest things is date and time. Um, you can see you have the field names. These are basically the types of fields that you can insert. And on the right side is the format of how you want it to look. And then there's uh, sometimes a preview. Uh, actually, these are the previews. So let's say I want the current date, right? So here's all of my options for displaying the current date. So what happens is, and again, we're right here. This is where our cursor's at. That's where our field is going to be inserted. So I'm going to pick date. I'm going to pick just the first one. And you know, if you're in a, in a country that has the date that looks different, maybe your year is first, maybe your, uh, year, uh, day month, or, you know, maybe your, um, day month year, it, it's however you want to do it. All the formats are here. You can have it fully spelled out. I'm just going to choose this one. So I'm going to hit okay. And what happens is you'll see the date is inserted and behind it is a gray background. You'll also notice that when you select this, it selects the entire field. You can't come in here and edit a portion of this. It doesn't just enter some static text. This text is linked to the date. So if I come back and check this tomorrow, this box will have automatically updated because it's reading the time from the computer. If I want to edit this, I can simply double click it, come back in here to the field dialog box, and maybe I want to change the format to a, a full date display. Now I've got that. This is great for dating drawings. You can do things like plot date, which shows the last time a drawing was plotted, or save date, which is great, shows the last time a drawing was saved. Um, you can even show the time it was saved. Um, and you know, I won't really work now because if I hit save, it'll just show the exact same time. But you can pick again your format and which one of these you want to use. Um, document is another one you may want to use. Um, some of these you're probably not going to be concerned with file size and hyperlink, but file name is kind of an important one. Say you want to title a drawing based off of whatever the current drawing name is. So I'm going to say file name. Um, I don't really care about the format and here's the, here's the file name itself. I want to say the file name only. You can choose to have the path in there, but I'm going to say file name only and I'm not going to display the extension. So I'll say, okay. That's what this drawing is called right now. But let's say I want to save the drawing. And I'm just going to save this into, uh, let's see, where is you can't draft? Am I in the right folder? Documents. You can draft. There it is. Okay. So we're just going to call this, um, 
let's say we have an official drawing number. Let's say it's like uh, A1.0 uh, or just A10 FP for floor plan. Oh, that's it. So I hit save. You see how the, 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 the field change because it's updated based on the file name. And again, I'm choosing not to display the extension. If I want to display, display the extension, I can put that here or I can choose to be without it. And then you can change the formatting. You can have it be all lowercase, all uppercase, whatever you need to do. Um, you roll through these, like just see which ones would be applicable to you. Um, later on, when I go over sheet set creation, um, the sheet set will like this area here will become super important, uh, specifically current sheet custom and current sheet set custom are going to be super important because they link attributes between the sheet set properties and the title blocks. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in, an, in another video regarding sheet sets, but it's important you understand fields before I can get to there. Um, again, plot, um, you can, information about the plot and all the information is shown up here. The, the, the preview is usually shown at the top. Um, and I believe you can do with, uh, with the document. I'm not sure. There's a way you can show like a username. I don't remember which one it is. Um, like author possibly, or, or something along those lines. You have to go through them all. Um, and the reason I'm kind of, kind of just glossing over these is because one of the more important ones I want to go over is object and it's under objects. Um, and the reason object is important, you see, there's nothing here. The reason object is important is because you need to select the object. And then you, what happens is you get all these various properties of the object. So let's say, um, let's say I have a circle. I come in here, I double click my field, I go to object. And here I'm going to select, this is the select object button. So I'm going to select the object and here is waiting for the object type. So I click this, I click the circle. Now I've got a circle and these are all of the properties that I can read from the circle. I can read the area, the circumference, the color, all these different things. And you can see what the preview is. Let's say I want to see um, the radius of that circle. I can see, I can have it using the current units or decimal, architectural, whatever I need it to show. I can hit OK and it's dynamic now because what happens is if this changes, when you regenerate, you always have to regen to update a field. You regen and you can see that the field has automatically updated. It's updating with this. I'm sure you can think of creative ways of how this can help you out. Maybe you're making a dynamic block and you have a scalable a scalable object and you want that scalable object to be dynamically displayed like with the, the length or the diameter or something along those lines. You can do that. Uh, or even coordinates. Um, I believe there is a way to show coordinates. I'm not sure if this one has it. Uh, center, yeah. So this will display the, the center coordinate of, uh, of that circle. If the circle moves, the coordinates change. So now you can start seeing how you can use things like this to make intelligent text boxes that update with objects in your drawing. Um, another one that I commonly use is viewport scale. So I have a viewport here because I'm in paper space. Let's say I want to set my viewport to quarter inch. That might be too small. Let's set it to one inch, okay? So what I might do is have, uh, say I have this text box as uh, a section, section A, okay? And under section A, I'm gonna put scale. And then we'll center this up. Okay, and usually this would be underneath your viewport. Um, things are massively out of scale here, but you're gonna get the point, okay? All right. So what happens is I want to insert the scale, but I want the scale to be dynamic. So what I'm going to do is go back to the field box, go to object, and I'm going to select the viewport this time. Now I have a bunch of different options. And one of the options I can choose is the standard scale. You can see the preview here is one inch equals one foot. So I'm going to hit okay. And now you can see that the scale of the viewport is shown. If the scale of this viewport changes, so does the uh, the field attribute here. So there's a lot of different things you can do, especially when choosing 
uh, to display object data that fields can be useful for. Um, you know, you just have to kind of go through and see what types of things are available, what, uh, you know, and what would work for you. Um, I know that uh, personally, I have used the, uh, the 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 scale, the viewport scale. Uh, I've used uh, plot date, save date. Um, uh, there's I know there's one in here. I just can't think of where it's at. But there's a there's one for like what user created the drawing. Um, there's a you can create you can show the path for an entire drawing. You can put it on your title block somewhere. Any of these things. And again, I'm just showing this. I'm just showing this in. Uh, a text box here, a regular uh, mtext, but you can do this with a block as well. Let's say I make a quick attribute, so att def. If you've seen the uh, attribute video under my dynamic block series, um, we're just going to call this um, field, and the default is going to be temp. Okay, I'm not going to think crazy about this. We're just middle center. Hit OK. There's, there's my field. I want to make a little rectangle around this so we know it's a block. We're going to block this real fast, make up, just do a quick, again, we're going to call it test block. Specify a point, oops, right there, select my objects. Okay, there's our block. Okay, so temp is the default value of my attribute. I know I went kind of fast, but hopefully you've already seen the attribute video. If not, go watch it. All that it was create an attribute, put it in a block, and once you block it, it's showing the default value of that attribute. Now, what happens is when I go in here and edit this, I can change this to whatever I want. I can just say test instead, you know, or it's automatically updating. Um, so, or drawing. Now, what happens is instead of uh, using regular text, I can type Control F, and there I have my attributes just like I saw before. So again, I can put the date inside of this block and it's editable only, you know, it's not really editable here. You can only insert whatever the field is. You can't actually edit it. You can see how it's a gray and it selects as one entire object. Um, and, but it still follows text rules. So if your formatting is not correct, go to your, your text options over here and, you know, change like your width factor and then make it fit. It still follows, um, you know, formatting rules, but it's, but it is a field. So um, again, so that's another way you can put it into um, into uh, attributes. You can put it into uh, text boxes, um, among other things. Attributes inside of a block becomes really important again when it comes to title blocks. Um, if I go to File New, and I think AutoCAD has default blocks. Let me see here. I don't know if any of these are attributes, but I can go look. So here's like a, a regular template that they've come up with. Um, they don't seem to have anything here, but look here, here we have scale, right? So here's where I can put my attribute definition. So ATT def, and we call this scale and the default is just uh, XXXX. Actually, you don't even have, to, you can actually put the field straight from here. The field is right here, insert fields. I don't even have to like go back later and do it. You could actually insert control F or hit this button, get straight to your fields. Um, and of course we don't have a viewport, so we can't link this to a viewport right now. Um, but, uh, you can, you know, I probably should use her. We'll do date. So we'll do uh, date and we'll put it as save date and the save date can be there. We say, okay, put this right here and then close the block editor. Actually, let's put this over here a little bit. Save. And then, uh, so what happens is, I'm gonna just a real quick kind of tangent. Anytime you edit the attributes of a block after the block has been created, in order for it to update, you have to type in a command called att sync to update that. Now it shows as blanks. And the reason it's showing as a blank is because I haven't saved this drawing yet. So I'm gonna save this again, and we're gonna call this uh, date example. Save. Now the date shows up because I have officially saved it for the first time. So um, putting attributes inside of title blocks is really uh, important because it makes them smart. Um, and it becomes extremely important when <clears throat> you want to start linking these to sheet sets because it, with sheet sets, you can create all kinds of custom properties um, like who, who drafted it, who checked it, uh, maybe who the engineer is. Um, the date all these things were done, uh, the title can all be dynamic and linked back to the sheet set, but it has to be done with attributes um, 
and they have to be fields that link them. So I'll get to all that in the sheet set series, but this is an example of how you can use fields to your advantage. Mix and match, experiment. You know, it's be the best way to learn is just to experiment with this stuff and see what works best for you. Because there's a lot for me to go through every single one of these. And and like I said, there's, there's a number of them I don't even, I'm not too familiar with because I don't use them. Um, but this is examples of how I use them personally. And hopefully you find a way to use them and, and make your workflow better as well.